Well, thank you for joining us for the Williamsburg Business Roundtable. My name is Rick Overy and I'm honored to be the chairman of the Williamsburg EDA. And uh, today we're excited because we have one of our partners uh, in the launch pad who will be presenting. Um, we're very excited that Dr. Rachel Frazier has been able to join us today. We would like you to um, add your uh, name and business or title to the chat room if you would. Um, we haven't done that before, but with this virtual format, uh, that's the best way to capture that. Uh, but we wanna thank you for taking the time to join us. Uh, our program, as most of you know, uh, we'll have the presentation uh, from uh, Rachel about the launch pad. We'll have questions for her, which can either be entered through the chat uh, or we can call on you when her remarks are finished. Uh, but we would invite uh, questions. And then we'll have an update from the acting director, uh, Yuri Adams, on uh, goings on, lots of really wonderful goings on in the Williamsburg um, Development Office. So again, thank you for joining us. Um, Dr. Rachel Frazier is a clinical assistant professor and associate director of the Allen B. Miller Entrepreneurship Center. Uh, which is a long way of saying uh, she is uh, very qualified to speak on entrepreneurship, both teaching it, but also uh, practicing entrepreneurship. She uh, started her own high-tech company, uh, and she really enjoyed that and grew into a passion. But what she also enjoyed and learned a lot about is how to help entrepreneurs be successful. So uh, she supports entrepreneurs and academic innovators from startup to growth as the associate director of the Allen B. Miller Entrepreneurship Center at William & Mary, which is part of the Mason School of Business. And she currently manages also the Launchpad Business Incubator, which is the cooperative uh, incubator for businesses between James City County, York County, and the city. And we were really excited to have that co-located with the Entrepreneurship Center on Richmond Road, um, which is a wonderful bridge between the college and the community. Dr. Frazier teaches uh, entrepreneurship at William & Mary, and she works with entrepreneurial students and acad academic innovators as they translate their ideas into business and connect with their first customers. She also has studied the business of entrepreneurship, and uh, her areas of interest and expertise include customer discovery and the scientific approach to evidence-based entrepreneurship. So I think this is a new field in the last, I don't know, 20 years, you can educate us, uh, Rachel, but actually studying how entrepreneurship happens. Uh, business model innovation, partnerships, and co-development for product innovation, prototypes, and minimum viable products, uh, patent trends and new technologies, technology commercialization, and value-based pricing for startups. So she comes to us with significant expertise. Um, we're really grateful to have you leading uh, both the Launchpad and the Entrepreneurship Center. Uh, Rachel, we're looking forward to your presentation. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you, Rick. Um, I appreciate that introduction. You know, uh, you really hit on my, my passion is, you know, I did, I started my own company um, and in the high tech uh, entrepreneurship world, we like to use baseball analogies. And I like to think that I had a solid base hit, but I wasn't a home run. And I really found like my, my passion and my strength lays in, in, in helping other entrepreneurs. So happy to do it here in Williamsburg. I love it. Um, I'll tell you, we have, uh, I, I can see two of our entrepreneurs on the call today. Um, Adam and Liz, hi. And I see a lot of our, a lot of other folk in our ecosystem. Hi, Julie. Hi, Barbara. Um, and so I'm, I'm real happy to be here and, and share some updates and kind of give you an idea about what Launchpad's about. We really do. The one thing that you said, Rick, that, that we wholeheartedly embrace is that idea of customers come first. Because everybody on this call knows without customers, you have no business. So that is literally what we, what we focus on. Um, and so I'm trying to give in the presentation today, for those of you who haven't seen the new space, a glimpse at least of pictures of the new space. I'm in Woodbine, Georgia, which is rural Georgia. We're visiting my parents. And, um, and so I couldn't give you the tour today. I was hoping you know that would be a nice touch. But I'm trying to capture some of the, the space in, in the images because it's a really cool place to collaborate. And, um, and, and one of the biggest things about Launchpad is, um, is that it's all about the people. 
Okay, and so really what we are is an entrepreneurial ecosystem. And it's a partnership, you know, like Rick, you said it beautifully, it's a partnership. It's a way now to plug everybody in together to the same network and start having some interactions happen that may have been difficult in the past. It's hard for people on William & Mary's campus. I know Williamsburg isn't a long, it's not a long drive to Newtown, but it's much easier for people to cross the street, right, than to go across town um, and vice versa. Now that we're like in the middle of, of downtown, it's phenomenal just to see all the different types of people in the space. Um, but it really is an entrepreneurial ecosystem. And we're here to support entrepreneurs, right? And the most important things that we focus on are enabling entrepreneurs to work together, okay? To collaborate in the same space and learn from each other and learn from the other people in the ecosystem so that our entrepreneurs can build repeatable, meaning that their business model happens the same way each and every time. It's an efficient process and scalable so that they graduate from the incubator. Um, and I do want to just say a very special thank you to City of Williamsburg, James City County, and York County, and William and Mary for this opportunity because it has been it has been very exciting to to make the transition to having Launchpad be part of um, William and Mary, and so a little bit more about our ecosystem. At the heart of our ecosystem, are entrepreneurs. All right, and these are folk like Adam and Liz who are on the call today. Um, and basically, that whole idea that we support them in doing what they what what they need to be doing in order to grow and scale and and flourish really is that we have different groups of people, right? We have different groups of people and different organizations that can provide some of the support, okay? And so um, the Entrepreneurship Center, which is also, it, it, it is housed in the hub that's in Tribe Square in the new space, um, that really helps funnel in some of the supporting people, such as our coaches. Most of them come either through the center um, from, from when Launchpad was in Newtown or from the Mason School of Business. And so, as you can imagine, we have experts in different industries that can provide a wide variety um, of, of feedback and um and perspective to our, our entrepreneurs um and and we have we have industries spanning um tech you know that's that's kind of a big thing in academia but we also have the other end of the spectrum franchising as you can imagine in williamsburg this area franchising is going to be huge right we want some of our companies we want to see a cheese shop and i'm taking that as an example but we want to see some of our companies growing and actually expanding across to to larger portions of our region um like aromas aromas has already expanded inside of our our area i'd love to see it you know down here in Georgia even. Um, but the coaches are what allows us to, to help provide actionable guidance. And what that means is that literally when an entrepreneur sits down with a coach, the coach already knows because I've talked to them what the strategy of the entrepreneur's company is. And that strategy is actually developed by the entrepreneur. We just reinforce it, but it allows the coach to provide actionable guidance so that when the entrepreneur goes out and does something and learns something, they come back and it doesn't matter which coach they go to, the coach will provide, it's, it's, it's just reinforcement of what the entrepreneurs are already doing. Um, and so that's, that's one piece of it. That's a big piece that the entrepreneurs see um, a lot of champions. That's another piece that the entrepreneurs see um, and our, our, our partners. And so when I say partners, I don't mean the partnership itself with the city of Williamsburg, James City County, York County and, and William and Mary. What I mean are some of these folks that are now like they're peripheral, right? To, to the, this core group um, that's actually providing the infrastructure and they're supporting. So those are things like the career center. And listen, that's really important because the career center provides a very easy way for our growing companies to actually get connected to the next generation of their employees. Um, and so that's been that's been a, a phenomenal asset for us to, to have as a partner. Um, Crimdale Small Business Network, that's another one. So during the pandemic, as, as y'all can imagine, we literally officially opened our doors January 1st, 2020 and shut them March 16th, 2020. 
And then we got call after call after call from small businesses who we really could not help because we were literally closed. But what we could do was support them. And we supported them through our partner, Crimdell Small Business Network. And that actually made it, it, it enabled us to help in a way that we, we wouldn't have been able to, to help with. Um, and Crimdell also supports us in what we do because they bring small businesses into the space. And again, it goes back to this ecosystem, right? right? This ecosystem, these people that are in working together and learning from one another. It's amazing to see people in a room and, and have people share their experiences. And it lets somebody who is facing an obstacle not the wheel, gives them a perspective and actually lets them um, move forward along a very relevant and appropriate and successful path in a way where, you know, instead of having to learn on their own and, and spend time really, you know, learning um, best practices, they can hear it from other people. Um, so those are those are a couple of examples. Start Peninsula is another great example, all right? And Start Peninsula is kind of in here between partners and economic development because they really are, um, they're actually a part of our funnel. So Launchpad provides a six month community membership to all of the, the top three winners of Start Peninsula each year. And that's been phenomenal because we've gotten um, a, a couple of people who are from further down the peninsula right engaging in our in our um, ecosystem as entrepreneurs and and it's been it's been phenomenal and then of course we have our our um, economic development people um like i see barbara julie rick on the call thank you all very much for your support that's really behind the scenes um, with the exception of our entrepreneurs that are on the call adam and liz and they see it firsthand so um so anyways that's kind of the the idea that people are the most important and so we go into the support that we provide launchpad is an incubator but we're also starting to realize that we're an entrepreneur lab and that word those words entrepreneur lab I didn't make those up. I actually heard our members calling it an entrepreneur lab. And I was like, oh yes, it really is. And it goes back to what Rick was saying, that whole idea of exploring, right? Because when you're in the early stages, whether you're starting or whether you're growing, you don't know what works most efficiently. And one of the things that we do to support these entrepreneurs is help them to understand literally what works the best for their business, right? And then turn that into a model. So that, that is the idea of, of exploring, right? And then turn that into a model that you can start executing. And ah, here comes the repeatable, right? You don't just do it once, but then you can turn it into day-to-day -day operations with the eye on being profitable. So you can establish financial stability. And the hope is that then our companies graduate, right? And then they become even the coaches, okay? And then in that way, they start doing, doing the very typical economic development things such as hiring people, um, starting manufacturing um, plants, the, those kinds of things, all right? So the whole idea behind what we do is we not only support entrepreneurs as they're in the execute phase and they're trying to get their legs under them, but we also help them explore and identify seek out evidence that proves that their business model works and effectively so that then they can just rock and roll and graduate. Okay. And so some of the things that we provide is support. Um, we, we, of course we incubate the companies, right? Okay. Um, but another thing that we do that's a little bit behind the scenes that not everybody on the call may, may realize what we do is we, we try to identify some of these companies, right? So I have calls with Yuri all the time. Maybe all the time is a little too, too generous, but quite frequently, right? Where we're saying, ah, here are some companies that could come into our area, right? Um, and, and really the whole idea is that any company, we, we assess companies based on their potential to create and build these repeatable and scalable models. And that goes back to what Rick was saying, this whole idea of, you know, we do, we do evidence-based entrepreneurship, right? So we look for these companies who have the, the, the market, they're in high growth markets. Um, they are at a stage of their business that they're poised to grow. And what I mean by that is we don't just take people who have company ideas, business ideas. We actually, most of our Launchpad members have existing businesses 
and they're looking for that edge to either hone their model or get to a point where they grow, right? Um, and, and then really what it comes down to is our, our network of groups, right? Our ecosystem, right? And, and the biggest thing about that is that we have um, such a strong, um, um, I don't know how to say it, we have a large diversity of backgrounds, of, of industries, of perspectives, of cultures, even people coming from different places in, um, in not only our country, but also from other countries. And that really helps to support, especially if you think about our location, we are close enough to the port that we should be thinking globally, right? To try and bring in, um, bring in some companies that could either move to export or move, move to import. Um, but then coaching and act actionable guidance, that's one of the things that we facilitate, right? This is the support, support we provide. And again, it goes goes back to keeping entrepreneurs focused on meeting the goals and the objectives that they identify their business needs. Okay. We actually don't tell them what they should do with their business, you know, except Adam, Adam can attest to sometimes we, we, our sessions turn into brainstorms, <laughs> which can be unproductive. We try to prevent that. Instead, what we try to do is keep everybody focused on, on what it is that they know they need to be doing as a business. Um, and we provide programs and activities, right? So here comes the, the, the infrastructure in terms of programs and activities to bolster the entrepreneurs as they are um, out doing their exploration and their execution of their business models. Um, and then lastly, and I intentionally put this lastly because I think that this is um, the thing that entrepreneurs first think is the most valuable, which is the physical space and the amenities, but quickly realize is the least valuable because you can find space anywhere. You can work out of your house. You know, the pandemic, I think, taught us all that we can work out of our house. Um, but we do provide the, the physical infrastructure, such as the, the collaborative space, offices, Wi-Fi, conference rooms, parking, kitchens, et cetera that really help make it a little bit more like home, home for our entrepreneurs. At least that's what I would, I'd like to think is we provide them a home away from home, right? Um, and so, like I said, our coaches are, are one of the biggest things that, that, that we, we pull together. And um, I, I actively in my, in my day-to-day -day job facilitate. Um, and we have a, a, a large group of, of these people. Um, and they not only, this is, this is actually something that I didn't pull into the ecosystem when I was on that slide that I mentioned, but the one thing we have seen since April, since April of 2021, the one thing that we have seen that has been actually kind of exciting and interesting is we've started to pull in William & Mary faculty as entrepreneurs. <laughs> <laughs> not just, you know, giving advice to people, not just business faculty coming in and, and helping some of our, our entrepreneurs, like for example, Chris McCoy is an accounting professor. You know, it's not just him coming and providing some advice into, um, into financial spreadsheets, but, but really it's faculty coming in looking for ways to start their own companies. Um, and these coaches, they provide the actionable guidance. They're, they're the ones that, um, that meet consistently with our entrepreneurs and the William & Mary students and faculty. And so when I say entrepreneurs, I really mean anybody who comes in and, and we provide support to. Um, so we've got a, a pretty deep um, Rolodex, if you will, of these coaches. And the way that our coach network works is that we literally facilitate office hours. So you can sign up to meet with a coach online and you literally sign up for 20 minutes at a time. And the reason why goes back to when I started my company, I went through an accelerator and I had, they had a fantastic mentor network, but I tell you, I had 20 mentors and they all, all told me different things to do. And um, goodness, I couldn't keep up with that. You know, <laughs> like full disclosure, complete honesty, can't keep up with 20 different people telling you 20 different things to do. And so instead what we do is we keep the meetings short, okay? So the entrepreneurs bring what they need to the meeting and the coach listens and then gives quick feedback, right? And, um, and then lets the entrepreneur go do what they need to do instead of getting stuck in that, that mentoring um, 
mentoring rut, I would call it. Um, and so big thank you to, to all of our coaches. They've been phenomenal with our entrepreneurs. Um, and then here's an idea of, of some of the programs and activities that we do. And these are the ones that happen routinely. These are the ones that don't change. Um, these kind of form the foundation of, of, the, of, of this type of infrastructure that we provide. Um, so the recurring ones, um, all of our members go through a quarterly business robustness check. Um, in which we go through and we, we actually, we go through things that, um, that are, for example, um, customer activation, right? So, so literally it's something where they bring the evidence during the quarter that they've gathered to show whether or not their approach is working, right? And what can be honed. And we work on those things. And that's just kind of our quick touch point. Um, and, and that literally is some, a meeting that they have with me and a quick touch point to make sure that they are thriving okay or at least they're on the on the path to thriving um, and then we have monthly huddles and um, these are really where the entrepreneurs bring obstacles bring issues and they share it with each other in a safe environment and then literally what happens is that somebody else has had that same problem and can provide some guidance to them that says oh well here's the easy easy way to do this and not easy because most of the entrepreneurs that have these best practices learned it the hard way. Um, and so we do that. We've actually moved that to precarious, which has been a lot of fun. Um, and then we have our monthly collab. And so that means like, that's literally like a workshop where, um, where the entrepreneurs come together and, um, and, and we work through some activity together and this is this is a part of working together and learning from one another and it's probably the probably the most valuable um aspect of what launchpad has to offer um then we have some special topics so a couple of examples that we've had this year is we had a an expert who an, an expert in franchising um come in and she can give some one-on-one -on -one advice to, to companies who are thinking of exploring how to become a, a franchise. There are some things that need to be thought about well in advance of actually making the jump to becoming a franchise. And then we had Elaine Luria, um, Congresswoman Elaine Luria come and talk to the entrepreneurs. She wanted to understand how the payroll protection loans were going for our entrepreneurs, how the process was working for them. Um, and so those are kind of the things that, and, and that, that was pretty exclusive to our Launchpad membership. Um, she literally wanted to come and talk to the Launchpad members. Um, and then on demand, the office hours with a coach that I talked about, we also have mentors. And these are people who have told me that they have expertise in one particular area and they want me to pair them with um, a, a, a startup or a company um, on an as needed basis. So these people are not coaches. They don't volunteer um, one to two hours a month regularly um, to, to meet with entrepreneurs. They're, they're just on demand. Um, and then whiteboarding. Okay. And so, so we literally will pull out whiteboards with entrepreneurs when they say, Rachel, I don't know how to do this. Or, or actually they don't usually say that. They say, you know, I've noticed this. I've noticed this particular aspect of my business, right? And I really want to be able to get to the next step. And, and we just literally walk through and, and, and work on that. So whiteboarding. Um, so here's some key statistics. Okay, so we've had 14 total members January 2020 through December 14th. Um, and when I talk about 14 total members, I literally mean people who come in and are trying to grow their business. Um, we, we have just recently realized the opportunity to expand the community membership to people who are um, who are entrepreneurs in our region who can actually kind of um, um, just just contribute to the overall intellectual capital if you will of our network um, but but these 14 total members have literally been people who have come in and either they wanted to start a company or they've been in the, in the growth stage Three, um, three of those were prize memberships from Start Peninsula 2020. Um, and we have three William & Mary alumni founders and um, including Adam and Liz. So sorry, and sorry, Adam and Liz for, you know, y'all just happen to be on the call. So of course I'm gonna celebrate you as much as possible. Um, and we've had one, one company literally graduate from the incubator and get out into the real world. Um, and and so a graduate, I need, to, I, need, I need to touch on this. Community members don't necessarily go through the stages of incubate, graduate. 
community members are the people who want to work alongside one another, who want to just be a part of the literal community of entrepreneurs. Okay. <clears throat> The people who go through Incubate Graduate are the people who do not have physical locations, maybe don't have actual businesses in our region and they're trying to start them or expand into our region. Um, and so I, I do want to make that that distinction. Um, and then we've had one Rise Challenge winner. Um, we've had one Start Peninsula 2021 winner. I think those are really the areas of opportunity for growth of our launch pad our, our Launchpad membership is, is, is to start plugging into more of these things and getting the next step that are really, really comes down to the investment, right? The community investment into, um, into their businesses. Um, we have had 163 office hours with a coach, um, which is actually a fantastic number. Um, if you think about that, that's more than one a week, which is fantastic for the past two, um, for the past two years since January 20. 20, wait a minute, that's January 2020 to December 31st, two years, yes, All right, yeah, yeah, I see Rick nodding, <laughs> sometimes my might not do so well in math, okay, um, we've had 12 huddles, um, and we literally were closed for, for um, some of that time, um, we've had seven collab workshops, we've had two special events, we've had one inaugural showcase, so that was the thing that I didn't list on the programs and activities, but literally the showcase, and we had our first one April um, of this past year, the showcase is literally that, where we have our Launchpad members come together and talk about their businesses, but we get them in front of people who are not only our, the regional people who need to understand about them, but are statewide and nationwide. So we had a representative from um, the, the Commonwealth Innovation Technology, I can't remember, now, now it's called something else, but we had a representative from, um, from, from a couple of the statewide programs and, and people that came in from, that, are, that are nationally. And the reason why is because we wanna showcase the people, right? Phenomenal entrepreneurs, we want everybody to know about it. So we had the inaugural showcase this past April and, and we hope to, turn that into a recurring event. Um, but literally what that's ended up being is, um, I, I, I hope, uh, satisfied entrepreneurs and, and people who can actually grow and expand um, their businesses. And, uh, and, and a lot of, of finally, um, this past summer, we started doing more of the in-person activities, which has been fantastic. Um, but this is just a glimpse of some of the things that we do. Um, and a couple of highlights, we had Elaine Luria come in. We had President Rowe come to this event also. So just, you know, I mean, these are people who are, um, who have an emotional investment, right? And, uh, and, and, and quite frankly, um, um, some financial investment in, in our, our community of entrepreneurs, but there's President Rowe with um, Representative Elaine Loria. Um, and and it, was a, it was a fantastic event. So these entrepreneurs actually, you know, you, you can think about large companies lobby all the time and their voices are heard. These small businesses don't have that opportunity yet. <laughs> they actually did. They actually got a chance to provide feedback. And, um, and it, was, it was very beneficial. Um, and then here's our graduates. So Aaron Benia, who is also um, one of the winners of Start Peninsula 2021, they literally opened their physical location on December 4th and have officially graduated from the incubator. Um, there's her husband, Oz. And, and you can see one of our coaches showed up. Um, Coach Michelle King showed up um, to support Aaron, and, um, and, and she and I just happened to be at the same time, hence the pictures. But the thing about it is that Oz told us that they were already booked for December, okay? And, and this is literally like Aaron, I call her a growth hacker because she, she literally opened a brick and mortar storefront in MacArthur Center in the middle of the pandemic <laughs> when most people were facing closing, right? I mean, you know, like, and she arrived. And in fact, there were people who were coming from Williamsburg down there to be her clients. And she said, oh, well, here's an opportunity. So she really is truly one of these growth hackers. And, um, and this, is, this is one of the things that we, we really like to see. Um, and we are recruiting, okay? And so what we look for are incubatable 
companies, all right, um, that are looking to explore, iterate, launch model, expand their business. The ideal characteristics are that they demonstrate a strong market demand, okay, or a high growth field. Um, and their time to market is usually within two years. For some of the high tech companies, and we do have a couple of those, we have a machine learning company as a member. Um, for some of those companies, of course, time to market might be a little bit longer than two years, but I think this is generally, you know, like uh, about what we're looking for. And they're either in the early um, stages of expansion to our region or the early stages of business development. Um, and so here's what we hope that um, people pass along to, to, um, to the people that you know who might actually be good fits for Launchpad because we would like to try and build out, um, build out our membership. And so that's, um, that's what we, we do. We let people plug into Greater Williamsburg Entrepreneurial Ecosystem, um, provide entrepreneurs an opportunity to work alongside one another and learn from each other. And um, at the same time, they can gain access to coaches, programs, resources. Um, so thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. And I see, Ted, you have a question about summer internship opportunities. So that's a really good question. Um, and I'm not sure of the answer right now. You know, I would love to say yes, but my focus, <laughs> my focus, like um, literally the past year has been to encourage our Launchpad members to provide internship opportunities and paid internship opportunities, right? Um, so that we literally can keep some of these students who come down from areas like Northern Virginia, right, to stay here and work for the companies. Um, so I haven't thought about about Launchpad having internship opportunities, but I love that idea. So I'm not sure if you wouldn't mind clarifying, do you mean Launchpad has interns or the companies? For sure the companies do. In fact, let me tell you about this cool new program. I know I'm, I've probably gone way over and Rick, please, you can jump in and say, Rachel, okay. Um, with the Graduate Career Management Center, we started this pilot program where, um, I don't know if y'all have heard of fractional, officers the big one that people do there there are literally companies who get executives who are either retired or kind of at, at a point in their career where they're not working full-time and they become fractional officers for companies um, what we're doing with the the graduate career management center is tapping into the pipeline of mba students and masters of accounting students who literally have prior work experience and have expertise in it and we're encouraging our Launchpad members to post jobs, temporary um, jobs, but something like a chief marketing officer, something that MBA would be a perfect fit for, an MBA student would be a perfect fit for. And then they'd have a very specific project that they would work on. And um, literally the MBA would be the strategic thinker for the Launchpad member. Um, and it would free up for the Launchpad members some of the time to do some of the other activities that um, that need to happen. So um, that's one thing. And and doesn't quite look like a summer internship, um, but but it it gives that similar idea of that experiential learning for the student, um, but then also the the valuable support for the Launchpad member. Well, Rachel, that is an excellent overview, and I really thank you for that. Most people on the call are familiar with the Launchpad, but I hope that one of the things we've done today is equip each of us to be better ambassadors of what's going on. Um, as most of you know, this has also been more than a decade in the making. Uh, for many years, it was very difficult for the students to figure out how to jump over the brick wall and to get engaged in the business community in the city and for city business to figure out how to access uh, the resources at the college, um, but with, I think, City Council and President Rowe really excited about this, and President Rowe is an entrepreneur of her own, um, there's a real vision for where this goes forward. And I think the other thing that struck me is the statistics that you gave were almost entirely during COVID, and so where we can go from here, I think, is only um, up to imagination. But uh, with the structures in place, the programs in place, the people in place, um, and the cooperation between all the entities of the ecosystem. I think uh, where this goes in the future will be a model for many, many other communities, but it's very exciting. We appreciate your leadership um, over these last two years. Uh, any other questions? Um, 
Another question is about uh, brainstorming sessions with Midtown Row. Um, are you working with any, whether it's Midtown Row or the Edge District, are you yet able to, to reach out to any of the business communities in Williamsburg? Um, so that's another great, great point, Ted. I appreciate you putting that, that question in there. I haven't yet had the opportunity to do that. Um, I will tell you that um, I have just started getting into some of the, the actual networking activities and starting meeting, meeting people in person because literally I started October 11th, 10th, 2019 and, um, <laughs> and, and then we closed and um, so I haven't yet but that is that's fantastic because you know things like that like for sure we want to get we want to get um retailers in there that either are you know they're 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 at the point where they're expanding to our region or or what if even we get some people that that move into that space who who can become franchises themselves that would be phenomenal um and in a brainstorming session that's one of the things that i love so i love that that suggestion i'd love to be put in contact with with anybody that y'all can think of that, um, that, that could benefit from, you know, just, um, just really um, identifying opportunities. Um, the, the, the one thing that I was able to do, there was some exploration of, um, of German companies coming in to the area and I was a part of that. Um, and I do try to, as much as possible, be a part of any of the, the industry analysis and those kinds of things. And if I understand your role right, uh, Rachel, one of the things we can do is feed people to you. It's not that you're going to be able to answer all their questions, but you can plug them into this ecosystem and, and be the sort of focal point for that. That's the hope, Rick. That's the hope, you know, um, and I think, you know, we actually have a couple, um, I'd have to, I'd have to think, you know, some, sometimes I can't remember things as well as I used to remember things, but we have had a couple of instances where somebody has come to Launchpad and I haven't been able to answer their question, but I can definitely find somebody who can answer their question. Absolutely. Um, and, and so, yeah, yeah, you know that I, I do like to think that we, we provide support the other way, you know, in, in that instance too, but yes, absolutely happy to have anyone pointed pointed in, in our direction. Um, in fact, I will give a great, I'll, I'll give one example. And this was just kind of a, one of those serendipitous things that happened. Um, Michelle DeWitt actually pointed a, a company to me. Well, it turned out the company didn't need to be Launchpad, but he became one of our coaches and his expertise is in nonprofits. And we actually have a Launchpad member who is nonprofit and um, really needs that, that assistance. So, um, you know, those kinds of things. Yeah. Yeah. We try to get them plugged in in any way possible. I think this is also a focal point for all the community resources. So we have so many retirees, we have so many business members, but it's the accountability and, and like you described that ecosystem. Um, so I hope each of you will go out and talk about the launch pad in the new year. Um, Rachel and I, as we came on the call, we were amazed that we actually have known each other for two years, but never met in person. So that's the other casualty of COVID is this is a really neat incubator space where when we can open the patio and people can gather, uh, it'll be even more so. So, uh, well, enjoy the holidays, Rachel, with your family. And thank you so much for taking the time to uh, cover all the exciting things that are going on in Launchpad and give us some idea of where it can go. So okay. really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, Rick. It's a pleasure and happy, happy holidays to all y'all too. Thank you. At this point, I want to turn it over to Acting Director uh, Yuri Adams, who has been really at the focal point. One of the things that we've been very proud of uh, over the last year is that the economic development efforts in Williamsburg did not shut down. In fact, uh, they have arguably ramped up um, as we have awarded um, well over a million dollars now to local businesses. And Yuri has really been uh, the person who's been getting that money from the state, but also uh, in charge of a detailed process to allocate it fairly across uh, Williamsburg businesses. So um, Yuri, thank you for your efforts throughout this year, whether it was remotely or in person. Uh, what we've heard back from Williamsburg businesses is that they do understand that and appreciate that the Williamsburg EDA is trying to retain the businesses that we have as well as build up new ones through activities like the incubator. So Yuri. 
Thank you, Rick. And thank you so much, Rachel, for that presentation um, and that overview of, of what Launchpad has to offer the business community here. Um, something that I really want to drive home from her presentation before I get to the slide that's on the screen right now, Bonilla Pet Studio, as she, she mentioned, had um, a location in MacArthur Mall and then was a winner of Start Peninsula. So for those of you who might not know, Start Peninsula is um, a regional entrepreneurial pitching competition that's put on by the six peninsula locales. Um, so they won that part of their prize package was a six month membership with Launchpad. They got plugged in with Rachel, um, who, who helped them figure out the scalability of their business. Um, and, and they ended up, as she said, opening um, a studio here in High Street um, just a couple weeks ago. And so I wouldn't go so far as to say that Start Peninsula or the Launchpad or any of those individual meetings or, or, or coaching sessions or, or any of that would be the reason that they ended up here. Um, but we are fostering the growth of that entrepreneurial ecosystem um, and, and making great efforts to reduce barriers to opening a business in Williamsburg. Um, so I think that that's a huge success, a huge win, and something that, um, that should be celebrated. Um, so with that, I'll get to what's on the screen. Um, you're probably tired of hearing about this if you've been um, tuning into these um, sessions over the past couple of years, but we still have money in the third phase of the CDBG business grant program. Um, so if you have not applied to the program before at all, it is um, eligible. Anybody that has a business in the city of Williamsburg, York County, or the city of Pocosin is eligible. Um, the program can reimburse up to six months of rent or mortgage expenses. Um, up to $15,000. So if you applied under phase two and you are or phase one, um, and you received two months of reimbursement and it was $5,000 and you're eligible for another four months at $10,000. I just threw a lot of numbers out there. So if you have any questions about the program, I dropped my email address in the chat box. Please feel free to reach out to me with any questions. Um, visit yeswilliamsburg.com slash CDBG grant. It's up there on the screen. That has all the information on the program guidelines, um, the required documentation. You'll need to provide a lease and, and proof that you paid your rent or mortgage. Um, but we're trying to make it as seamless and easy as possible. If you have any difficulties with the online application, we're happy to help you fill out a paper application. Um, so don't let that be the barrier between you um, receiving this money. Um, a couple other things I just wanted to take note of or mention, um, we've got a ribbon cutting coming up this Friday. 17th at 10 a.m. Um, we'll be celebrating the opening of three Merchant Square businesses, three new retailers there, um, Fat Face, Jay McLaughlin, and um, Penny and a Sixpence. Um, so that will be at 440 um, West Duke of Gloucester Street is the address. It's the old William Sonoma building, if um, you're familiar with it. Um, and so we'll be celebrating that opening at 10 a.m. Um, Mayor Pons will be there um, to share a few words of welcome with the businesses. So we're excited for that. Um, and if you need me to retell you the address, again, feel free to shoot me an email and I'm happy to answer any questions. And with that, I will pass it back over to you, Rick. Well, thank you, Yuri. Um, I think we have a lot to be grateful for in our community. Um, one of the things that we've been able to do is continue to build businesses and attract businesses even during the pandemic. And that's another great example of taking a space that was vacated and um, making sure it was refilled and it was a community effort. So we hope that you will come out and celebrate that. And that's one of the jobs of the Economic Development Office is to uh, celebrate and continue to support existing businesses as well as bring new ones here. Uh, but I also think as we head into the holidays that we want to be mindful that uh, particularly in the hospitality tourism industry, January and February are traditionally difficult times and this year even more so after uh, two years of the pandemic. So I hope that each of you will be ambassadors to go out and put them, uh, put any businesses that you know that are struggling in contact with Yuri, uh, potentially with Rachel. Uh, but let's make sure that they get the support that they need through the winter, whether it's financial support, money that's out there, and whether it's our particular grant program, uh, Yuri and Joanna are really familiar with all of the grant programs, federal, state, and local uh, that are available and really good. Some poor businesses are struggling so much they don't even know what they've applied for and what they've missed out on. So I hope that the 20 people who are on the call today can be ambassadors for the launch pad, but also ambassadors to those businesses who are struggling and try and encourage them uh, to see if we can't support them uh, through the winter. Uh, with that, have a very Merry Christmas, very happy holidays. Uh, we look forward to a great year. And as always, please make it a great day to do business in Williamsburg. Thanks so much for attending. Thanks so much, everyone. See you next time.